Proverbs promises us that if we walk in wisdom, that everything else that we need will come along with it. I mean, the promises in Proverbs of what God will do for us if we operate in wisdom are astounding. I mean, it's riches and honor and promotion and long life and good health and all the things that we really want if we just apply wisdom. Anybody who would take the book of Proverbs, study it, and apply every principle in it would have a life that was so amazing. I mean, it would be like jaw-dropping amazing. So before I go any further, I want you to consider, are you applying to your life the things that you say you know? Are do you often hear yourself say, I know I shouldn't do this, but, or I know I should do this, but? Well, that means you know what to do, but you're not doing it. Wisdom is a depth, depth of insight that goes beyond the surface of a thing. Wisdom takes us beyond the way things look to the way they really are. Wisdom goes beyond how we feel to do what we know is right. You see, we have a flesh, and the flesh consists of our body and our soul. And what God wants, he comes to live in our spirit, and he wants to be able to have control of the soul. If the spirit and the soul are in control, then Satan has already won. Well, the soul is mind, will, and emotions. And so often people live based on what they want, they think, and they feel. I want, I think, I feel. I want, I think, I feel. But Proverbs is telling us that we need to go way beyond all that. We need to live beyond how we feel. I mean, our feelings are, are real. And, you know, we don't have to say we don't have them. We can admit that we have them. But we can't let them control our decisions, our mind. How often do we say, well, I think, I think, I think, I think. But what does God's word say? And even what we want. Well, I want this, I want that. You know, God didn't call us to have everything that we want in life. He's called us to do his will. And if we do, then we'll end up with everything that we want that is something that we really should have. I want to know today if you want a deeper relationship with God or if you want to just keep stuffing your head full of knowledge and not applying it to your life. And I know many of you are applying it, but I'll tell you, writing Proverbs was good for me. Studying to teach this today was good for me because these are things that we need to be reminded of and reminded of very, very often. Wisdom involves discernment, and it's one of my favorite things to ponder and think about. We're going to talk a little bit more about it later. But discernment is something that doesn't come out of your head. It comes out of your spirit. And so if we can learn how to discern what's right and wrong and live by that, it's going to make our lives so, so, so much better. But you see, to go deeper takes more time. And the problem is, is we're in a hurry and we're impatient. And so we, if we feel like we want it, we just want to get it. And if we're going to walk in wisdom, we're going to have to take more time to really discern and properly understand exactly what it is that we're doing. Wisdom always thinks about later on. Matter of fact, there's a lot of different definitions of wisdom that are all great, but I have my own little definition that I like. Wisdom always does now what it will be happy with later on. You see, a foolish person never thinks about later on. They just want what feels good right now, but later on always comes. Please understand that. Later on always comes, and the Bible says we reap according to what we sow. And so if you're sowing bad seeds or seeds of disobedience, it may appear for a period of time like you're getting by with it, but eventually we will reap on those seeds that we've sown. If we're obedient, we'll reap on those seeds. If we're disobedient, we will reap on those seeds. Hebrews 12 says, No discipline for the present seems joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, later on, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. 
you know, let's just say somebody who's, who are physically out of shape and they need to exercise and they need to lose weight. Well, nobody likes being hungry. And if I've overeaten for a long period of time and I want to lose weight, then I have to cut back on my eating and I will be hungry for a period of time and I won't like it and it won't be comfortable. But when I'm 20 pounds lighter, I'm going to love it. Later on always comes. Proverbs 1, 7 says, The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning and the principle and the choice part of knowledge, its starting point and its essence. But fools despise skillful and godly wisdom, instruction, and discipline. Anytime you run into somebody that knows everything, you can't tell them anything, and anything if you even suggest that they might be wrong about something, they get all upset about it, then you have just run into a foolish person. Because actually a wise person, the Bible says, loves correction. Now, I'll have to admit that I've at least learned how to not get upset when I get corrected, but I'm still working on loving it. I don't think any of us love to have somebody tell us that we're wrong, but it is important that we can receive correction from those who give us wise correction. The fear of the Lord. Well, what is that? That's not something that you hear talked about very often. Matter of fact, I think we need to hear it talked about a lot more. What is the fear of the Lord? It's not being afraid of God. God loves us. He's good. He's not going to hurt us. But it means to have a, a reverence and a respect for God that means you know how powerful he is. You know that when he says something, he means it. And so you're not going to go against things that he says, just kind of hoping that you'll get by with it. When Dave and I were raising our children and they were young, because of the way I was raised in a dysfunctional, abusive home, and I got a lot of unfair punishment, I had a difficult time sometimes being as strict with my kids as I should have been. And so let's say they did something they shouldn't have done. Well, I might be the one that would say, you're not going out of this house for 30 days. Well, after I calmed down, I knew that that was going to be punishment for me, not them. And so it was easy for them to talk me into changing my mind. But my husband Dave was not like that. He thought about whatever kind of punishment he was going to lay down. And if he said it, he meant it. And the kids knew that if he said it, it was going to happen. And so they had a more reverential fear of Dave than they did of me. And we need to have that reverential fear of God. It's something that's really missing for people. The world is full of people today that call themselves Christians that think that they can do things and they'll be the one that'll get by with it. Well, God understands or... You know, it's the 21st century. Well, you know what? God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what his word meant 100 years ago, it still means today. The Bible says that we need understanding. I actually talk about seven foundational principles in Proverbs. And they are wisdom and understanding and knowledge and the reverential fear of God and discretion and discernment and I don't know if I forgot any, but we'll get around to all of them. And so those are the things that we learn, and they're all deeper things. They're not surfacey things. Understanding means mind or intelligence, reflective thought, knowledge, or to perceive with the mind. Well, you know, you might, like in, in school, when kids are being taught reading, they, they not only are taught how to read, but they're given tests on their comprehension. In other words... A person might read a book real fast, but they might not really understand what they read. And I think in time, the more you ponder something, the more you understand it. Mark 4 says the measure of thought and study that you give to the truth that you hear is the measure of virtue and knowledge that will come back to you again. So let me ask a question. Do you ever take notes when you're in church or maybe buy a recorded copy of the message and actually then take that message and maybe spend the next week 
in your private Bible study, going over it and over it, looking up the scriptures, pondering and praying over what it says. See, I think this is what I mean when I say we have all this knowledge, but how much wisdom do we really have? How many people go to church and maybe you, you know, let's just say you went to church and I couldn't make it that week and I said to you, well, how was church? They say, oh, it was great. The message was great. Well, what did the pastor preach on? Uh, and sometimes an hour after you get out of church, you can't even remember what the sermon was about. Well, that means you were paying attention on a surface level and not on a level where it got really down deep on the inside of you. I actually think we have too much available to us today, and we just go from subject to subject to subject to subject and never stick with anything long enough for it to really become a revelation in our life. I desperately needed to have a revelation on God's unconditional love for me. And I can tell you I didn't get it from hearing one scripture. I had to study the love of God for a year before it really became a reality to me. And now I know that I know that I know that I know that God loves me. And when I'm having a problem in my life, I never say, well, God, don't you love me? It goes along with what the Bible says in Proverbs 8 about being more than conquerors, not Proverbs 8, I'm sorry, Romans 8, and that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus. And so we need to know these things in a deeper way. I know that I know that God is with me all the time. Whether I can feel his presence or I can't feel his presence or it seems like he's there, he's not. I know that I know that I know that he is. But I've studied that for a long period of time. 